evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us. I'm Peter Dubois. And I'm Beth Jones. With less than a month left in this current legislative session, Democrats have introduced a proposed red flag law in response to the Lewiston mass shooting. Our Augusta reporter Corey Bouchard spoke with lawmakers on both sides of the aisle to learn more about their thoughts on the bill. A bill introduced by Speaker of the House Rachel Talbot Ross on Wednesday would allow family members to petition a judge to temporarily remove weapons from a loved one who poses a significant danger to themselves or others. This is commonly referred to as a red flag law. I'm hearing from many constituents that they want to see this at least being discussed. So I'm happy to hear that we are going to get it into a committee and have a public hearing on it. My initial thoughts are, I think it's March 28th, we're due to adjourn this session in two weeks, and I think it's absolutely absurd that this is being rammed through. That shortened timeline is something that Senate President Troy Jackson says shouldn't be a barrier to passing legislation. I think the biggest thing is that the legislature should uh, Look at it, consider it, uh, you know, whatever people decide to vote is fine. Uh, the legislature should always take the opportunity to uh, look at issues, even when you don't like them, because that's really what our job is. Senator Lisa Keim, one of the legislators who helped craft the yellow flag law, says currently a red flag law is unnecessary in Maine. But we've had consideration of red flag, um, really thorough consideration, pretty much every session since I've been here. And when we came up, with the yellow flag law, that was taking all of the best pieces out of what would be considered red flag and putting it into something that really protects people's uh, constitutional rights. President Jackson says there's no reason why Maine couldn't have both a red flag law and a yellow flag law together. Red flag, I think, has a place along with yellow flag. I am not supportive of getting rid of the yellow flag. It saved lives. No one can tell me it hasn't. I think Lewiston exposed a problem where uh, close family members uh, may usually know better than anyone, and in this case they weren't uh, able to enact um, the ability to have Mr. Kyard's guns taken away from him. At the State House, I'm Corey Bouchard for ABC7 and Fox 22 News. Among the Mainers most interested in new gun control bills being considered at the State House, members of the deaf and hard of hearing community. Many of those bills are being heard and debated in the Judiciary Committee. And to accommodate members of the deaf community, there is now a sign language interpreter at all hearings where those bills are being considered. Naturally, uh, folks in that community have a lot of interest in, in what is being uh, debated here. And so we wanted to make sure that uh, that interest uh, was recognized and that they would be able to access uh, the debate and, and understand everything that's going on. Some lawmakers would like to see the use of sign language interpreters expanded, but there is nothing officially in the works just yet. The trial of Frenchville woman Louise Brown versus Northern Light Easter Main Medical Center continued today with testimony from experts. Brown is suing the hospital for negligence. Our Grace Blanchard was at the courthouse and has the latest. As the Louise Brown versus Northern Light Eastern Maine Medical Center trial entered its fourth day, attorneys for both sides squared off over testimony from medical experts. Louise Brown is suing the hospital for negligence after her arm was crushed while under anesthesia between a table and base of a machine during an endoscopic procedure in 2019. Her attorneys argue that she now suffers from chronic regional pain syndrome. However, an expert medical witness for the defense questioned that diagnosis in court. I found multiple instances where the documentation did not reflect any of the findings I, I would expect to see from a patient with CRPS. However, Brown's attorney argued he could not make an accurate assessment given he did not perform an exam on you her. You told me in your deposition that you weren't sure if it was a CRPS, right? It is my impression that she does not. Am I saying, as I, test, as I testified earlier, 100% certainly, no, but my impression or review of the medical records is there are signs and symptoms as documented and the records are not consistent with CRPS. The attorneys representing the hospital previously stated they do not question that an injury occurred, but the jury is meant to determine how much money she is owed. The jury heard from both the life care plan developer and economist that reviewed the value of her care plan, which the hospital is questioning. Present value, discounted value of the life care plan for 17.58 years of remaining future life expectancy for Louise Brown is $1,376,342. The jury is expected to hear closing arguments from both sides on Friday. In Bangor, 
Grace Blanchard for ABC7 and Fox 22 News. Well, pharmacies have resumed billing main care for prescriptions after a national cybersecurity issue caused major disruptions. The problem began back on February 21st. A statement from the Maine Department of Health and Human Services says Maine Care will pay all eligible claims submitted during the outage. The resumption of pharmacy claims processing and payment brings Maine Care closer to full restoration of the system. However, some normal operating processes continue to be suspended. Amelia Arnold, the legislative liaison for the Maine Pharmacy Association, said, quote, pharmacies have stepped up to serve Maine people by accomplishing a tremendous amount of additional work over the last five weeks. We're pleased operations are returning to normal, end quote. Dover Foxcroft residents will vote in June on whether to remove the town's historic dam. But town officials say if the plan is not approved, residents will foot the bill to repair it. Our David Ledford explains. This week, the Dover Foxcroft Select Board unanimously approved the language that will be used on the town's June ballot to decide the future of the Mayo Mill Dam. The language specifies that the town will have to use an estimated six to eight million dollars in local taxes to repair the dam if voters choose not to remove it, while the removal would come at no cost to taxpayers. The alternative to uh, moving forward would be to retain the site and have to invest the money into uh, rehabbing it and uh, maintaining it. Officials say an approval to remove the dam would allow them to build a riverfront park in its place and help to reduce the risk of flooding. It's a huge expense for the town and it also is a source of flooding and you know damage to our infrastructure, uh, roads and so forth. We would be um, you know, improving the uh, aesthetics of the area. Employees of nearby businesses say they're optimistic about the potential removal of the dam. We've got some partners who are going to help us take it down safely and in a way that I think will improve the town and the river in general. And I think it'll make downtown more of a destination than it is right now. However, some area residents we spoke with say they would be sad to see it go. We are going to miss it terribly because it's been part of our lives. I am fighting whatever I can do to stop the dam from going. I mean, it's refurbishable. Town officials say they plan to hold a public hearing prior to the June 11th vote and an annual town meeting on April 27th at 9 a.m. In Dover Foxcroft, David Ledford, ABC 7 and Fox 22 News. An annual conference focused on the on the future of Maine's water resources today in Augusta. The University of Maine hosts the Maine Sustainability and Water Conference every year to bring together professionals, researchers, consultants, students and regulators to discuss challenges facing Maine's water resources and work on solutions. People have come from all levels of government, tribal nations, uh, non-governmental organizations, colleges and universities, business and industry, this is an extraordinary gathering. And I think it says something that is so clear in Maine, that there are lots of people who care about the future of their communities, whether regardless of their job, regardless of where they live, this plays out differently in the greater Portland area than it does up in the county. Well, more than 500 people attended this year's conference. Grant recipients for this year's Rural Energy for America program, or REAP, heard how much money they were awarded today. Our Matthew Jaroncic has details. The U.S. Department of Agriculture announced grants for 17 main farms and small businesses totaling $2.1 million. But this represents just a ton of work that you put in, and thank you so much for, for making it through the process with us. The Rural Energy for American program grants are meant to help agricultural producers and rural small business owners make energy efficient improvements and investments to lower energy costs, generate new income, and strengthen operations. Towns across this country thrive and continue to be the really the economic backbone of the country. Maine is one of the key drivers for ensuring that small businesses across this country thrive because the vast majority of jobs in this country are in small businesses. Sydney Axney, White House Senior Advisor for Rural Engagement, Delivery and Prosperity, and Maine USDA Rural Development State Director Rhiannon Hampson announced some of this year's recipients at Cedarworks and Rockport. They were joined by Maine Congresswoman Shelley Pingree, who explained the importance of these investments. $65,000 to solar logics. Uh, and it's really just a celebration of a partnership that's been happening for a long time. So thank you. 
this means that you might be able to put a solar array on the roof or do other investments that will in the long run bring down the cost of um, solar energy, make it much more possible for that farmer, for instance, to make a little bit better profit or that business to be more sustainable. Joshua Emmerman, co-owner of Moore Hill Farm, was one of 17 grant recipients and was awarded $64,950. He says he couldn't be happier getting a reimbursement for the solar panels he installed on the top of his farm. To be able to, to utilize uh, renewable energy to, to run the farm, uh, run the fiber mill on the rest of the farm is really huge. In Rockport, Matthew Jaroncic, ABC7 and Fox 22 News. Well, I know it's a cliche, but rain, rain, ugh, go away. <laughs> yeah, please, will you? I mean, <laughs> yeah. I think we're uh, plenty sick of it at this point. Yeah. It's uh, been a it's been a very soggy day and frankly a soggy week and yeah yeah I think we're due for a little sunshine let's see if it's if uh, we're gonna get at least a break from the precipitation overnight and then maybe some sunshine tomorrow let's find out thank you so much and wow the last couple of days it's just been raining I had to walk around my umbrella like my phone in my pocket right and that's gonna continue overnight tonight into the day tomorrow tomorrow though a little bit more cooler air rolling in and possibly some snow will be mixing on in now visibility wise though we are low in some spots right by the coast five to seven miles here in town we're around four miles Millinocket area same story only at around four miles of visibility combination of dense fog thicker clouds and some rain of course not looking good. High temperatures earlier today, mid 40s here in town. We did see some upper 40s, Bar Harbor into Rockland near 50, but not quite there. Greenville, Millinocket area, mid 40s. Tonight, though, we will continue to see that rain heavy at times. Temperatures in those upper 30s. And still to come on Fox 22 News at 10, the Portland Jet Port announces plans to add some much needed parking. We'll have details. Stay tuned for that story and more local news when we come right back. Great Scott! This is Green Bear 420 in 2010. What kind of trip is this? I gotta get back to 2023. Wait, it's 2015. So much has changed. In 2023, we had a lot more glass, t-shirts, and novelties. It's gonna take a bolt of lightning to get me home. Finally, home at last. Now Green Bear 420, Green Bear Green Care is bigger and better than ever. To be continued. A family-owned and operated business since 1953, Hammond Lumber Company recognizes the value of their team members and the importance of employee satisfaction. Hammond is honored to have been named one of the best places to work in Maine for three years running. This year, Hammond was selected as one of the best companies to work for by Business New Hampshire magazine. Hammond is always looking for great people to join their team. To find your place on the Hammond team, click on the careers link at HammondLumber.com. Rowell's Garage has been serving customers in the greater Dover Foxcroft region since 1946. Our goal is not just selling you a vehicle, but also giving you quality service to maintain your vehicle at peak performance. Browse our inventory online or in person. Whether it's a car, truck, or SUV, we can put you in the vehicle that is right for you. Sales, service, and parts. Rowell's Garage, doing business the right way every day. Little Miss Davis Sweets and Treats, a home-based business that specializes in homemade baked goods. I bake everything from mini cupcakes and cakes, including my giant cookies, cupcakes, and large gingerbread men. I also specialize in baking homemade fudge and brownies too. Everything I bake is made to order, so I do kindly ask for at least a seven-day pickup notice when placing your order. Little Miss Davis Sweets and Treats. The baddest superstars on the planet are unleashed in prime time. From the heavens! All new Friday Night Smackdown at 8, 7 Central on Fox. Hello, I'm Emma Smith, and coming up on Good Morning Maine, a big day for baseball fans in the area since it's Red Sox opening day. We'll have that in our latest sports segment. Plus, Maine Representative Austin Terrio has been endorsed by Donald Trump for Congress. And for more sports stuff, a big day for you Maine hockey fans as tournaments are coming up. These stories and more on Good Morning Maine. Plans to add parking at the Portland Jetport are taking off, yep we said it, but also changing in response to concerns from neighbors. Mal Meyer is hearing from leaders who say this needs to happen to meet demand created during the pandemic. 
Well, this will get us what we need today, which is very critical. Jetport leaders want to add more long-term surface parking on what's now some woods, an adjacent gravel lot, and the current cell phone lot. It would create a net gain of 282 spots. This really improves efficiency, will make it easier for the passengers, and much more convenient to the terminal. Paul Bradbury estimates it could cost around $8 million. The proposed two-phase project would no longer include a 100-space cell phone lot along Jetport Boulevard. We can accommodate that function with fewer spaces elsewhere on the campus at this time. Some neighbors have been worried about the environmental impact and potential for more noise. We've had some really good conversations. The Stroudwater Neighborhood Association's president thinks the changes were in response to the discussions between residents and the airport director. We just have not fully gotten to the point where we're like on the same page about every single issue, but we're, we're working to keep the conversation going. Among lingering concerns, the potential for development on that part of the property in the future because it's zoned for airport business. I know it concerns us a little that it's off the table only for now. It will probably return. But there could be other ways to address that, depending on parking needs in the future. This sets the stage as demand increases for the next phase of structured parking garage, uh, you know, within the next five to 10 years. More meetings are needed before this proposal could get approval from local and state leaders. That was Matt Meyer reporting. You may not know how much work takes place before you walk into a sports bar ahead of a big game. With UMaine Cor and Cornell matching up in the NCAA hockey tournament, our Doug Banks spoke with the owner of the Penobscot Poorhouse before it became a packed house. With 25 TVs inside the Penobscot Poorhouse, there's a good chance most of the TVs will be tuned to the same channel as UMaine faces off against Cornell, the Black Bears' first tourney game since 2012. There's a lot of people that maybe uh, now wrap themselves around new main hockey because they realize, like, oh my goodness, we're, we're back in it. Here we are once again. We used to be in it all the time, right? And here we are, it's a big game. So making sure like the staff is really aware of the hype and the excitement and, and uh, be aware of how important this is for us as a community. Staff came in at 8 a.m. to clean and prepare specials. We're actually adding a, special, a couple specials because of the game itself. We'll come up with some main focused drink specials named after the Black Bears. And get ready for a busy night. From 10 o'clock to 1 o'clock, it's not like, hey, how's it going? Good to see ya. It's more of, what can I get for you? What can I get for you? And ultimately, that's what we need to do. But what constitutes a good night for a Bangor sports bar? I'd like to see the Irvis main win, <laughs> uh, but uh, just like any other night, nice smooth night, everyone has a great time, and uh, looking forward to coming back, and we see them the next day. In Bangor, Doug Banks, ABC7 and Fox 22 News. Well, coming up on the 10 p.m. news on Fox 22, we'll have the latest developments from that tragic bridge collapse in Baltimore. And there are new updates in former President Trump's election interference case. Stay tuned for those stories and more. I've been with U.S. Cellular for years now, and I think I'm their biggest fan. They asked me to tell you about their special customer event, Us Days. Us Days means exclusive deals just for us customers. Us Days at U.S. Cellular. Get up to $1,200 to upgrade to any new phone. Let's face it, getting training and experience is hard, but at Loring Job Corps, we can help. From certifications in automotive technology, obtaining your CDL, or learning building trades, we have you covered. Maybe you prefer joining the high-tech world of computer networking or cybersecurity. We have that as well. Don't delay. Get in the driver's seat to your future today. And the best part? Loring Job Corps is free. Receive free training, free meals, and even free housing. Call or go to jobcorp.gov slash Loring. Job Corps careers begin here. Imagine yourself in a new Toyota. So, which one do you want? This one. Wow. Recent college grads could get a $500 rebate over and above most other offers. Toyota, let's go places. Roto-Rooter has served the greater Bangor area and beyond for 35 years offering plumbing, hydrojetting, snaking, descaling, video inspection, and grease interceptor cleaning services. For all your residential and commercial clogs, call Roto-Rooter today, 990-1234. And away go troubles down the drain, Roto-Rooter. 
If you're looking to buy or sell a home, chances are you have a lot of questions. Norm Prouty has answers. Learn some tips and tricks and explore some beautiful new homes on the market. The Norm Prouty and Danell Baker Real Estate Show, Sunday mornings at 8.30 on Fox 22. Hood Milk and You. It's why we do what we do. Day in and day out. Making milk you can trust. With no artificial growth hormones. So you can feel good about Hood. Saturday, baseball's best are showing out on Fox. Saturday, Saturday, Saturday. The biggest games on the best day of the week. Fox Saturday Baseball returns March 30th. Right now at U.S. Cellular, you can get a new phone without having to trade in your old one. I'll trade you my PB&J for that phone. No, kid, you don't have to trade. See, $830 off any phone at U.S. Cellular. No trade-in needed. Boom. Chocolate milk. I'll take the chocolate milk. U.S. Cellular, built for us. There's one number you need to know. It's called Joe. Naval assets are helping the Army Corps of Engineers develop a plan to reopen the Port of Baltimore to ship traffic. That comes one day after divers recovered two victims from this week's deadly bridge collapse. Fox's Griff Jenkins has the story. Days after a ship strike caused a Baltimore bridge to collapse, parts of the structure remain in the Patapsco River. The Coast Guard says barges carrying cranes are making their way to the Francis Scott Key Bridge to begin the process of removing metal and concrete. Divers recovered the bodies of two victims on Wednesday and are expected to return to the site once the debris is cleared. This work is not going to take days. This work is not going to take weeks. We have a very long road ahead of us. Meanwhile, Maryland officials hope removing the debris will allow them to reopen the channel and once again move ships through the port. According to ship tracker Marine Traffic, at least 10 vessels have had to reroute to other ports in recent days. While Carnival Cruise Line says it is temporarily moving its Baltimore operations to Norfolk, Virginia, and bracing for a $10 million earnings loss this year. You know, the port's kind of the industrial heartbeat of Baltimore. You know, it's what puts the majority of the blue collar workers in Baltimore to work. Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg met with shipping and supply chain partners on Thursday to come up with alternative plans for ships needing another place to dock. Maybe using the expeditionary fast transport that the military uses to deploy uh, military units around the globe and force projection. Meanwhile, NTSB officials say a full investigation into the collision could take up to two years. In Baltimore Harbor, Griff Jenkins, Fox News. Talks between the U.S. and Israel on what steps are next in the war in Gaza resumed. The White House says both sides are still looking for a convenient date to meet after a canceled meeting this week. It comes as the International Court of Justice demanded Israel improve the humanitarian situation on the ground in Gaza. Fox's Caroline Shively reports. The United Nations top court ordered Israel to allow more aid into Gaza on Thursday. There is nothing in Gaza City, none of life's basics. There are no vegetables, fruits, meat, nothing for anyone to eat. It's uh, you know, clear that more aid needs to be get, getting in, which is why, again, uh, USAID, State Department, DOD, working with the international community to do that. As airstrikes and the ground war rages on. <laughs> Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's office has agreed to reschedule a D.C. visit by an Israeli delegation to discuss a planned ground invasion of Rafah in southern Gaza. Israel had canceled the meeting after the U.S. did not block a U.N. Security Council vote on a ceasefire resolution. They're on the cusp of winning. They need to go into Rafah and get it done. They need to do it as quickly as possible. And we should do everything we can to help them do that, not put constraints on them and embarrass them on the world stage. Meanwhile, families of Israeli soldiers still held hostage in Gaza protested outside a military recruiting center ahead of a meeting with Netanyahu, saying the prime minister had abandoned their loved ones. About 100 hostages are believed to still be in captivity. It's been too long, and I need my brother back. A Gallup poll released this week finds 55 percent of Americans disapprove of Israel's war in Gaza, up from 45 percent in November, a month after the Hamas attack. In Washington, Caroline Shively, Fox News. 
While former President Trump attended the wake of a murdered New York City police officer on Long Island today, his attorneys appeared for a court hearing in Georgia as part of his election interference case. The fate of that trial and a potential start date are now in the hands of a judge. Fox's Jonathan Sari has more from Atlanta. The future of the Georgia criminal case against former President Trump and his associates remains uncertain as the judge weighs today's arguments on whether Mr. Trump's alleged efforts to overturn the 2020 election were protected by the First Amendment. There is nothing alleged factually against President Trump that is not political speech. Trump's team is asking the judge to dismiss the indictment. Prosecutors want the trial to start August 5th. He's not being prosecuted for lying. He's being prosecuted for lying to the government, a state, uh, an act which is illegal because it does harm to the government. It was the first hearing in the Georgia case since March 15, when special prosecutor Nathan Wade resigned to allow District Attorney Fonnie Willis to continue prosecuting it. Judge Scott McAfee had ruled both prosecutors could not try the case together after the defense alleged a conflict of interest because of Willis's past romantic involvement with Wade. The defense is expected to appeal. We're going to be arguing that his decision actually should have gone farther and it should have actually disqualified her because he gave us all the factual findings we need. We just now need a court to say that's too much. That's enough. She's got to be disqualified. Willis also on the defense against House Republicans investigating her use of federal funds. In a letter to House Judiciary Committee Chairman Jim Jordan, Willis writes, I categorically reject the assertion that this office is deficient in responding to the committee's subpoena. The DA also warns Jordan, nothing that you do will derail the efforts of my staff and I to bring the election interference prosecution to trial. There's still no official start date for the trial. If his previous rulings are any guide, Judge McAfee could take several days before ruling on today's motions. In Atlanta, Jonathan Seri, Fox News. Former President Trump is weighing in on the race for Maine's 2nd Congressional District. In a post last night on Truth Social, Trump officially endorsed Representative Austin Terrio over his primary opponent, Representative Mike Sobolewski, writing in part, quote, Former NASCAR driver Austin Terrio is running for Congress in Maine's 2nd Congressional District against Democrat Jared Golden. In Congress, Austin Terrio will work hard to secure the border, protect our always under siege 2nd Amendment, stop crime, cut taxes, and support our brave law enforcement, military, and veterans. Austin Terrio has my complete and total endorsement. I knew that President Trump was watching this race in the 2nd District. Uh, this is an important area for him. Not only does he believe that we need strong leadership in D.C., but uh, he also believes that we need to put America first. And as I travel the district and talk to voters, one of the things they, they're frustrated with is year after year after year, it seems like our district's falling behind the rest of the state and the rest of the country. Economically, you know, uh, kids are moving away. People feel like there's no opportunities anymore. It's, it's high cost of living. Energy's high. It's hard for people to survive. Maine's Republican uh, primary is taking place on Tuesday, June 11th. Well, border agents in New Mexico warn the situation in their state is dire and very different from the one in neighboring Texas. Rather than turning themselves into border patrol like in other states, migrants crossing into New Mexico are purposefully avoiding agents altogether. Fox's Casey Stiegel is in Sunland Park, New Mexico with the latest. A tale of two border states. The Texas installed razor wire ends where Sunland Park, New Mexico begins. And officials say here they're experiencing a different side of the migrant crisis. What we're seeing in New Mexico on this side of the border, they don't want to get caught. Illegal crossings disrupting everyday life. On Wednesday morning, six migrants were caught near a middle school. The search forced the lockdown and the school superintendent says it's the second time it's happened in the past week. It is concerning and it does at some level disrupt our educational process. The local fire department is feeling the strain on resources, responding to migrant rescues and body recoveries. The Sunland Park fire chief tells Fox the illegal crossings take a toll on his team and the community. They'll hide in backyards, tool sheds, trash cans, up against buildings. The vast majority, I'm sure, are, are good people and looking for a better life. But again, we've seen the statistics. 
um, we know that there are bad actors in those groups. Those bad actors often make their way far beyond border states. New numbers from ICE show 216 criminal migrants were apprehended during a two-week operation this month nationwide. Many arrested had additional serious criminal convictions, including burglary, arson, assault, kidnapping, extortion, sexual assault, and forgery. And investigators say 104 of those arrested had previously been removed from the U.S., but illegally entered again, an alarming number for people living and working on the front lines. I'm not going to say we were, were overwhelmed, uh, but it's taxing on the community. Officials say bad problems will only get worse when the summer heat arrives. That will translate into more calls for migrant medical emergencies. That's the latest from Sunland Park, New Mexico. Casey Stiegel, Fox News. And still to come on Fox 22 News at 10, fallen crypto mogul Sam Bankman Freed receives his pr prison sentence. We'll have the details. And we'll also have highlights and more from Maine men's hockey NCAA tournament matchup against Cornell. We'll be back. NFL champs versus the XFL champs. UFL kickoff weekend begins Saturday at 1 on Fox. Welcome to 207 Wellness, where transformation begins from within. Embark on a journey of self-betterment with our comprehensive services from weight management to IV hydration, vitamin supplementation, and neurotoxin injections. 207 Wellness is here to support your wellness goals. Take the first step toward a healthier, happier you, rejuvenate your body, refresh your mind, and reclaim your vitality with 207 Wellness. Transform your wellness, transform your life. Give us a call today. For the second year in a row, Chevy Equinox has been ranked by J.D. Power number one in new vehicle quality for compact SUVs. In other words, it's really good right from the start. Chevy Equinox. Do that again. Connected by OnStar. Or current qualified Chevy lessees can get this Equinox for $269 a month. Or current qualified Chevy owners can get $2,500 total cash allowance on this Equinox. Visit your New England Chevy dealer. Orono is more than just a college town. It's an affordable destination. Welcome to the Orono Arcade, where we have both modern and retro games. And for a new experience, check out our nine-hole black light mini golf course. Budget-friendly, fun for the whole family, with 13 restaurants within walking distance. We look forward to seeing you soon at the Orno Arcade. CEM DP Border Contractors have been in business for more than 40 years. We have recently added an electrical division to further be of service to our loyal customers. CEM specializes in design built for commercial and residential projects. Whether you need help with older construction, new build outs, or electrical services, CEM has you covered. CEM is currently hiring for all positions. We offer competitive pay as well as great benefits. To inquire about employment or construction, please reach out to 848 7486 or visit cemmain.com. People ask me all the time, are those commercials really true? Does Lowry & Associates really get all of those clients, all of those big settlements? Yes, we do. We really have gotten millions of dollars for Mainers hurt by commercial vehicles. And the insurance companies know when you call the twos, we're going to fight for you. And you know what else is true? I really am standing on top of this big truck. Hurt by a big truck? Call the twos. We win for you. Disgraced crypto mogul Sam Bankman Freed sentenced to 25 years in prison for the multi billion dollar FTX fraud. Fox's Kelly O'Grady has the latest. Well, in the end, no one appears to be buying Sam Bankman Freed's Good Boy Crypto Act, not the jury when he was convicted last year, and certainly not the judge today. Now, he was sentenced to 25 years behind bars. The max he could have gotten was 110 years. The prosecution was looking for something in the 40 to 50 range. Now, he will serve that sentence in a medium uh, uh, security prison in San Francisco. That's the recommendation right now. He's also required to pay over $11 billion, though that is a formality at this point because he is pretty much broke. And we did hear from Sam himself today. It was rather surprising given his 
poor performance during the trial. He said he was sorry, that he made a lot of bad decisions, but he never admitted fault. Uh, that's important because his legal team does intend to file an appeal. There was also a lot of focus today on harm. The defense argued there was none, given customers are expected to get their money back through bankruptcy, but the judge bought none of that. He held SBF responsible for $8 billion in customer losses and $3 billion for investors and lenders. I will note, New York law, it is all about intent, not actual loss. It doesn't matter if victims will get their money back in the end. Not everyone, though, feels that 25 years is enough for the former crypto king. He's going to do about 15 years, maybe less. Yet I think the Senate should, should have been way closer to the 40 or 50 that the government asked for in the case to Judge Kaplan. And next up, Sam Bankman frieds legal team will likely file an appeal. Uh, I know 25 years, it may not seem much, but legal experts I'm talking to are saying that this is the equivalent of throwing the book at him when he is just 32. I'm Kelly O'Grady in New York. Meanwhile, prosecutors in California are warning of a resurgence in debit card skimming orchestrated by the Romanian mafia. The scheme involves placing fake devices on self-checkout machines in grocery stores. Surveillance footage reveals how swiftly these skimmers are installed, mimicking authentic card swipes. Despite recent arrests, the criminal activity persists with ties to organized crime in Romania and partnerships with Latin American cartels. It's a, a fake keypad on top of the real point of sale system that looks identical. It's fairly easy to take off. Uh, the adhesive isn't that strong. Because of the reason when they come in, uh, they put it in with a matter of seconds, and when they take it, they also do the same. Police advise customers to check for any loose or suspicious attachments before using their cards. They estimate the thieves could be raking in about $9 million a month. A majority of Americans think recycling is important, but why don't many participate? Fox's Ted Lindner takes a closer look at the reasons, plus how you and your family can get more involved. Reduce, reuse, recycle. It's a simple phrase packing big meaning. Recycling helps keep more waste from winding up in landfills, where piles of plastic trash takes hundreds of years to decompose, releasing harmful greenhouse gas emissions like methane in the process. According to data from the nonprofit group Project Drawdown, Recycling between 2020 and 2050 is expected to reduce emissions by 5.5 to 6 gigatons of carbon dioxide. That's equal to removing more than 1 billion vehicles off the streets for a year. We really have to think about uh, the bigger picture. But while a 2022 study by the World Economic Forum found 94% of Americans support recycling, only 35% actually do it. The main reason stopping people is a lack of convenience and confusion over what exactly can be recycled. Pay attention to the labels on the package and look for the ways that they are sort of indicating for you to recycle them. Uh, because it actually hurts the system if you recycle in the wrong way. But the buck doesn't stop with recycling cups, bottles, and containers. Food waste is a big uh, portion of um, the waste that, um, that goes into the landfill. The Environmental Protection Agency says composting is nature's way of recycling. James Sternberg of Clemson University says a lack of industrial composting centers makes it harder for more people to compost. If you can't compost at home, Sternberg recommends thinking about how much food you buy so you don't overconsume. The EPA reports food waste results in more methane emissions than any other material breaking down in landfills. Ted Lindner, Fox News. That's some handy information there. Yeah, some good things to keep in mind. Absolutely. Alrighty, folks, well, the full five day is coming up. Keep it right here. And the rain has been falling the last couple of days. Still a lot more to come for tomorrow, but a little bit of snow will be on the back end. How much snow are we talking? I'll have the answers and timing coming up. Comfy, cozy, relaxing. Not Joe. Joe's Furniture. Joe's Furniture Warehouse in Newport is the place to find rockers, recliners, sofas, and easy chairs. Quality furniture, affordable prices. Not your average Joe. Joe's Furniture Warehouse, Grogan Avenue in Newport. My father worked at the mill for over 30 years. He was exposed to a great community and excelled at his job, but he was also exposed to asbestos. 
The air quality inside the mill was always his biggest complaint. He had no idea how deadly some of the products and materials were. When he was diagnosed with mesothelioma, we knew to call Joe Bornstein's office to get my dad the help he needs and the justice he deserves. Call Joe today for a free case evaluation. There's never a fee unless you win. Come bowl a few games here at Bangor Brewer Bowling Lanes. We're one of the only Candlepin Bowling Alley centers in Maine. Conveniently located in the heart of Brewer, you always have the opportunity to simply bowl for fun. However, you can also join a league. We have youth leagues, adult and senior leagues. Now don't forget, we also host birthday parties for under $100 and gift certificates are also available. Give us a call right away at 989-3798 to make reservations for your birthday party today. Sunday on Fox. The kings of the lanes lay everything on the line for a major. Touch it! He's got it! Two pairs! Belmo adds to his legacy. And they surprise He's got This is where names become legends and legends become champions. He's the greatest! The PBA USBC Masters Finals, Sunday at 1.30 Eastern on Fox. Durable, sturdy, stylish. Not Joe. Joe's Furniture. Joe's Furniture Warehouse in Newport is the place to find solid wood, built to last, made in main dressers, bureaus, and nightstands. Not your average Joe. Joe's Furniture Warehouse, Grogan Avenue in Newport. <laughs> Welcome back, folks, and what a rainy last couple of days. The rain stretching all the way from the south right up into New York City, Boston, and, of course, here into Maine. Even a couple of games were canceled due to the weather. It's opening day. It's exciting day, but not for everybody. By tomorrow, though, things will be back on track. Not quite for us, though. That rain still falling here in town all over the state. That's going to continue into tomorrow as well. But a little bit of cooler air will be rolling in and possibly that rain mixing and then transitioning into a little bit of snow on the back end from north to south. We're going to see that cooler air rolling in and that rain and snow mix will be possible all over the state. Uh, accumulation wise, though, we're looking at very, very minimal accumulations, though, just because the ground's going to be wet, uh, temperature's going to be above freezing, just not a good combination at all for the snow to really pile up out there. That's why the accumulations are very low and limited to here in town or just east of town. We're talking right at that border. And then up north as well, we're talking um, uh, close to Caribou area where the snowfall totals might pile up to even a couple of inches with those temperatures being cooler, of course, than what we're going to be experiencing. Experiencing rainfall wise around an inch of liquid equivalent water. Machias, right by the coast, you know, Bar Harbor, Rockland area, possibly even an inch and a half of additional liquid equivalent rain on the way, on top of what has fallen so far, which is around two plus inches of rain in some spots. Now, uh, flood watches have been issued from just north of Millinocket all the way to the coast. And of course, some gale warnings have been issued as well. Even some dense fog advisories till around 3 a.m. Now, the winds are pretty light right now. They're going to continue to pick up in intensity by tomorrow into Saturday, especially. We're going to see some pretty breezy conditions around 25 to 30, even 35 mile an hour wind speeds at times throughout the day on Saturday, especially. Average high this time of year, 44. So we're going to be below that. Once again, Friday, Saturday, a little bit below average. Sunday into Monday, closer to average, maybe slightly above average by Monday. And then right back down to cooler temperatures Tuesday into Wednesday. By middle of next week, does get interesting with a big low pressure system in the area. Cooler temperatures. Maybe some more snow. We'll keep an eye on things. Not for tonight, though. Upper 30s, rain in the region. Of course, some fog as well. We are looking at that northwest wind gusting around 15, 20 miles per hour by tomorrow, though. A little bit more of a wind. We're looking at winds blowing and gusting up to 30 plus miles an hour. Rain all over the area. Temperatures around 40. And then that snow will be mixing in at times all over the state. It's not like it's going to be a heavy, heavy snow. We're just going to see that rain and then mixing with some snow into those evening hours as that cooler air makes its way into our area. Our extended forecast outlook does show morning snow showers on Saturday. Then we're going to see a lot, a lot of sunshine throughout the day on Saturday. By Easter, though, we're going to be clear temperatures in those mid 40s. All right. 
I'm so, focusing on the sun. Yeah, yeah, some relief on the way just a couple days until we get there. Indeed. Yeah. All right, sports is coming right up next. Stay with us. Does your dream kitchen look like this or this? Or maybe you need a little more inspiration. Get it when you explore the complete in-store showroom displays at Hammond Lumber Company. When you find the look you like, the Hammond team will help you customize it, including accurate 3D renderings so you can visualize your project before the work begins. Hammond offers delivery from any of the locations across Maine and New Hampshire and professional service after the sale. Your dream kitchen begins when you bring your vision to Hammond Lumber Company. Imagine yourself in a new Toyota. Hmm. Imagine all the slopes you'll conquer. Sick. Imagine all the sights you'll see. Wow. Whoa. Okay, how about you imagine dropping me off? <laughs> <laughs> right now, you could get special low 4.75% financing for 60 months on select luxurious all-wheel drive Highlanders, which could save you up to $2,800. Ready, set, go get your Toyota today. Toyota, let's go places. So we've lived in this house coming up 23 years. We just bought the tractor, and I haven't any idea how we survived without it. We're trying to rebuild the rock wall on this new property. She says, pick that rock up and put it here. No, it'll look better if you turn it this way. No, we're going to need to move it over there five feet. I would come to him and say, can you do this for me? And he'd kind of, you know, do the, ugh. But now he has a tractor. He's much more motivated. Experience United, your local John Deere dealer. Oversharing can be spiritual. Name someone you had a romantic dream about. My minister. Praise the Lord, Pastor. It can be loving. You love to plant a big wet kiss on Steve Harvey's what? Lips. <laughs> Your lips ain't big enough for these lips. It can be wet. Name someone who has touched your bare body. The pool guy. Overshare with Family Feud. Weeknights at 7 on Fox 22. Tonight Sports is brought to you by Engstrom's Auto Service in Guilford. We specialize in all foreign and domestic service and alignments. Hey everybody, Ryan Sudall here. Thank you so much for joining us. Huge night Thursday night as Maine men's hockey, the two seed in the Springfield Regional, played three seed Cornell in the Black Bears' first NCAA tournament game in 12 years. Tyler Cruz is there with highlights and more. Tyler. Hey, thanks Ryan. I am live here in Springfield at Mass Mutual Center where Maine Hockey just played, like you said, their first NCAA tournament game since 2012. We've been saying that all week. After nearly three overtimes between Denver and UMass in the first game of the day that Denver won, it was finally time for Maine to take the ice. Out there with the Black Bears, though, Victor Ostman. No, Albin Boya not feeling well, according to head coach Ben Barr. I could talk all day. Let's roll some of those highlights. Maine just two wins away from the Frozen Four. Winner gets to play Denver. Denver, we're at Mass Mutual taking on the Big Red. First period, Maine with it. Donovan Houle stops. He sends it to Harrison Scott, who has a great angle and rips home the first goal of the game. A couple of minutes later, watch this. Brad Nadeau takes a hit from behind from freshman Ryan Walsh. That's a five-minute major for checking from behind. Maine trying to capitalize, but look at the save from Ian Shane on the power play. Two of them right there stood on his head for those five minutes. Keeps it at one to nothing. Couple minutes later, how the tables turn. Maine trying to clear the offensive zone. Parker Lindor can't do it. Turns it over. Gabriel Seeger hits Kyle Penny, who fires and ties the game. That is the score at the end of the first. Second period, Maine on the penalty kill. Just a few seconds left. A great chance for the Big Red. Look at Osman sliding across the crease, making the save to keep it a one-goal game. To the other end of the ice now, Maine can't get the clear. Sullivan Mack ends up with it. Cornell has a 2-1 to one lead. We'd head to the third period at that score. Cornell again, and it's Sullivan Mack again in the third period. He snipes one stick side and beats Osman 3-1 to one Big Red. That is all she wrote. That's the final. After the game, the guy's upset, but it's not lost on them how successful this season was. I thought we had a, a good start and um, you know, had a five-minute major chance to you know go up by two or three and obviously it didn't happen and you know we're, we're incredibly proud of our team um you know how hard how, how far they brought this program this year and that one will sting for a while i'm i'm proud of the group proud of what we've done this year um obviously we're looking for a different result but i think just going forward it's 
continue to grow our culture, continue to have 20, 25 capable players on the ice. Now the next step for us is moving forward is going to be getting past this, this first round. That's going to be our, our goal. And that's a goal that could definitely be achieved in the near future, too. Maine has four seniors who could come back for a fifth year. Besides one fifth-year guy, everyone else can return for this Black Bears team. So today, not so bright. The future, bright for Maine hockey. I asked Ben Barr about what the next step might be, too. And he said, you know, when you lose the last game of the season, it's hard to have a positive outlook. But definitely proud of the guys for these last 30 games this season. They started it back in July. Uh, tough way to end the season, but a great one for the Black Bears. That's going to be all from me from Spring. Springfield live here at Mass Mutual Center. I'm Tyler Cruz. Ryan, back to you. Thank you very much, Tyler. Now let's stay with the Black Bears and move to UMaine softball. Black Bears gearing up for their first home conference games this weekend against Albany. Maine opened up America East play last weekend on the road against defending conference champs UMBC and were swept. They did improve each game, though, losing by just two in extra innings on Sunday. The result was not what they wanted, but their level of compete has them motivated as the conference schedule gets into full swing. I think it just gives a lot of hope for the future games. Uh, obviously, we have a lot to build on. I haven't really gotten a lot of wins yet, but still a lot of hope just based off those plays and based off how we've been competing. I don't think there was really any any doubt in anybody's mind throughout it that we weren't going to compete. I mean, our, our word this year is fight, and I think that we've been doing that, and we've been showing other teams that um, you know we're not just going to lay down. Albany will be another tough opponent. The Great Danes were conference tournament runners-up last season. But how well you perform in your home opener can be a spark plug for the rest of the year. Even with that pressure and their struggles this year, the Black Bears know that if they focus on their love of the game, good things will come. Just remember that we're all here to, to have fun and just kind of remember that childlike wonder of, of playing the game and not getting too in our heads about this is our first home game and there's so many people watching. It's just like... Play with the God-given talent and just do it because like, that's, that's when we play the best is when we, we play um, for each other and leave it out on the field. Great stuff right there. That's all the time we have for sports. We'll be right back after the break. Station trip hit a snag. Won't stop us. In a Nissan SUV, adventure begins where the road ends. Drive a Nissan SUV. Get a low 319 per month lease on the 2023 Nissan Rogue. Mmm, Planet Oats so creamy and not watery like. Exactly, and unsweetened has zero grams of sugar. And don't forget, it's an excellent source of calcium. Wow, Planet Oat really has it all. You guys are so right. No, you are. No, you are. No, no you, you are. are. Yeah, you are. Are you ready? It's Ford Truck Month, and we're celebrating 47 years as the best-selling trucks in America with special once-a-year offers on Ford F-Series, including the new 2024 Ford F-150 and Ford Super Duty, the North American Truck of the Year. It's time to celebrate America. This is Ford Truck Month. Now get 1.9% APR for 72 months on a 2023 Ford F-150 only at your New England Ford dealers. Transform your surroundings with Paramount Paving located in Bangor. They are your paving and seal coating experts. Whether it's residential maintenance to full commercial projects, Paramount Paving delivers quality that lasts. Book before June 1st and enjoy a $250 Visa gift card upon completion of your next paving project. Call us today at 602-8931 or visit us at ParamountPavingLLC.com. Paramount Paving, setting the standard for excellence. When it comes to paving, we are Paramount. Your favorite restaurants were half off. It's half off dining from Fox 22 and ABC 7. Go to foxbangor.com, click on half off dining, and start saving now. The Maniac Snack Shack. You will find delicious, tasty, insane desserts. Oh, and wait, there is more. We offer breakfast, lunch, and dinner options for take home. You want something special? Let us know, and we'll create that perfect treat for any occasion. The Maniac Snack Shack. Place your order today. Great restaurants from all over Eastern Maine at half off dining from Fox 22 and ABC 7. Fishing trip hit a snag, won't stop us. In a Nissan SUV, adventure begins where the road ends. Drive a Nissan SUV. Get a low 319 per month lease on the 2023 Nissan Rogue. It's an all-out battle for the 
checkered flag. The Toyota Owners 400, Easter Sunday on Fox. Taylor Swift's father will not be facing charges stemming from an alleged altercation with a photographer in Australia last month. The photographer, Ben McDonald, claimed Scott Swift assaulted him on the Sydney waterfront hours after the singer's Eras concert ended. McDonald said one of Swift's security guards forced an umbrella into his face and camera, and then Scott Swift punched him. Taylor Swift's representatives responded by accusing the media of acting aggressively during the, alter during the interaction. A police investigation of the incident reached the conclusion that no offenses were committed. Well, what started as a charity fundraiser by former football titan Rob Gronkowski snowballed into something so much more. A Florida woman and her veteran father were surprised with a pair of Corvettes by the Super Bowl champion and his girlfriend after winning a giveaway supporting their charities. The contest began as a way to fund as a way to raise funds for the Gronk Nation Youth Foundation, as well as the Pete Freights Foundation, raising awareness about ALS. But the surprises just kept coming. The woman, a military veteran herself, asked Gronkowski to go a step further and support her veteran community, helping coordinate a tour of the local VA hospital for the former Super Bowl champion. As for the Corvettes, one went to her father, the other she gave to her son, saying supporting her community was the biggest reward of all. Wowzers. Just a great story there. Back here at home, the fire marshal's office wants you to know that there's a plan to hold an expired marine flare disposal day in April. This is for any person that has marine emergency flares with an expired date on the package. You can drop those off at Hamilton Marine locations in Rockland, Searsport or Portland between 9 a.m. and 1 p.m. on April 13th. The fire marshal's office will collect them for a safe disposal. Well, many of Maine's sugar houses will once again be open this coming weekend to welcome visitors that missed out on Maine Maple Weekend last weekend when Mother Nature quite literally rained on our parade. This Saturday, March 30th, various members of the Maine Maple Producers Association will have plenty of maple products available. And it's best for you to go ahead and check with your local sugar shack for when they're going to be open as that will vary, vary rather from place to place. Maine maple producers say they pride themselves on making truly artisan products directly from the tree to the boiler. We've always had a fairly large amount of producers, but I believe in the last 10 to 15 years, um, a lot more people are producing syrup from a small scale to a very large scale. Well, many of the sugar shacks will have varieties of maple syrup, of course, plus maple candies, nuts, baked goods, and popcorn to offer. To learn more, visit MainMapleProducers.com. Great to see that they're going to get a repeat or rather a redo mm. of all of the awesomeness that comes out on Main Maple Weekend. And here's hoping that Mother Nature is at least a little more cooperative this time around. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, not, there's so many opportunities when you go visit your local sugar house, not just to, to try amazing things, yeah. but to learn something new as well. About the process. Exactly. Absolutely. Alrighty, folks, well, that is going to do it for us from everyone here at Fox 22. Take care. Good night. Good night, everyone.